My name's Curran. I'm with Kip Motor Company, and we wanted to show you our 1981 DeLorean that we've had at the shop for the past couple weeks. So to start off with, I wanted to talk a little bit about John DeLorean, the creator and mastermind behind this crazy automobile. And he originally started out as a chief designer for GM. He was responsible for things like the Pontiac GTO, the Pontiac Firebird, etc. He was a performance nut. He loved high horsepower, he loved going fast, and he decided he wanted to go out and do his own thing. So in 1973, he left GM to start the DeLorean Motor Company. So the DeLorean was manufactured between 1980 and 1983, and the reason for such a short production run was manufacturing problems, they had issues with supply, and mostly because John DeLorean ended up in a large lawsuit and legal battle over allegations of drug trafficking. He was eventually acquitted of all this in 1984, but by then, the DeLorean Motor Company had shut down production and had been sold. Now they only built about 9,000 of these total. Six of these cars were used in the Back to the Future franchise, which is where this car really became idolized. I mean, this is that is the movie where everybody recognizes this car, and it is such a staple point with its stainless steel brush body and just iconic gull wing doors, which we'll demonstrate for you. Now this was something that I didn't know, but to power the DeLorean, the original prototype back in 1976 was originally designed to have a rotary engine. So when you think rotary, you think Mazda, and there are RX-7s and things like that. However, that did not pan out. They couldn't get the engines, they couldn't really get a bit to work properly. So they ended up going with the PRV 2.9 liter V6 from Peugeot, Renault, and a Volvo partnership. And that engine produced 130 horsepower, severely underpowering the DeLorean, and we'll show that to you now. <laughs> Meaning that there wasn't enough power to move the car around at an efficient rate. And that was the main complaint of automotive journalists back in the 80s, such as Motor Trend, Road and Track, was the car just felt slow and sluggish for its price point. Now this car, new, in 1981, cost $25,000. And by 1983, the base price had jumped almost $10,000 past that bringing the grand total to a $34,000 car with gull wing doors and 130 horsepower. So you can see why some of the sales numbers were a little bit low. However, it is a fun car to drive. The handling characteristics are great. It has four wheel independent suspension, four wheel disc brakes all the way around. And it's just, it's just different and fun and cool. Now this car, we've done a lot of work to the cooling system replacing all of the flexible hoses, the radiator, the AC condenser, and the water pump uh, refurbishment. Uh, some other issues that this car had when it was brought to us were electrical related. The battery was draining and we ended up finding a phantom draw which draws the battery down over time while the car sits and isn't running and that was proven to be an aftermarket alarm system that had been installed. So now that that's been removed, the car starts and runs great this one has had an aftermarket exhaust system put on it, which makes this V6 sound like nothing else. I've never heard a V6 make this sound. It sounds like a V8 almost. It's really wild. Would you like a sound clip? Yes, Let's we would a love clip. a sound clip. So starting it is no different than any other car. This is actually a fuel injected engine using Bosch's K Jetronic fuel injection system. So all you got to do is turn the key. So what makes this car so special and why, why it was so loved back in the day was its surprising fuel economy. That was the one thing that uh, Motor Trend loved most about this car was how fuel efficient it was with that V6 engine. Now granted, it wasn't the most reliable engine on the planet. It had been basically given to DeLorean because he couldn't afford anything else. And another problem that plagued these cars was quality. So many of these cars were plagued with never ending problems built in at the factory, which is very unfortunate. These cars were built in Northern Ireland because again, that was the only place John DeLorean could afford to build the car. DeLoreans remain relatively inexpensive today. You can have a good one 
for right around forty to fifty thousand dollars, which needs which would need a, some minor work, a good sort of one. You can probably run into the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range. And if you really want to go for Back to the Future iconic, you know, Americana, that's going to run you probably close to a hundred thousand dollars for all the modification, the flex capacitor, the computers, all the lights, all the sounds, all the modifications to the exterior. But you'd have a wicked cool car that would absolutely stop car shows. So if you do buy one of these absolutely iconic cars, you can still buy parts for them. That's something that is come along in the past couple years. A man by the name of Stephen Wynn from Britain decided that he was going to buy the rights to the DMC brand along with all the parts that were left over from the production days in 1983. So they're actually located now in Houston, Texas, and they are still selling new old stock parts as well as recreating parts such as body panels, interior components. They are basically trying to remake the DeLorean. And thanks to a recent to a law recently passed, they're going to be able to start producing new DeLoreans from old parts. Now granted, they won't be exactly the same as they were back in the 80s. They'll have a modern engine, modern drivetrain, and be much more reliable, but you will still have the coolest car on the road. This car for me has a cool factor of a million, and I would love to own one. Thanks for watching.